Hello there, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills and grow as a designer. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at working with text in Adobe InDesign. So to start with, I've created a new document and we're going to select the text tool from the toolbar on the left. Now just left click and drag anywhere on the document to create a text box. And then you can start typing your text. I'm just going to type the word awesome. Now at the top here, we have a selection of different options for our text. And you can see by default, it's set at 12 point in size. So this is quite small. So with our cursor, we can just left click and drag to select this text. And we can use the up and down arrows here to increase and decrease the size. We can enter our own value and press enter, or we can select the drop down and we have some preset sizes here. So let's go and select 72. There we go. So that's much bigger. We can also select from the drop down here and we have a whole different selection of fonts to choose from. So I'm just going to select railway. And we also underneath that have the different font weights. So let's select bold. Now you can see here that the word sum has disappeared and been replaced with a hyphen or a dash. That's because the text at this size doesn't fit within the text box that we originally created. And you can see that by this little red plus symbol here. So what we can do is quite simply just from the bottom right corner, just increase the size of our text box by dragging with the arrow tool and suddenly it becomes visible again. So with the text tool, we can select our text once again. So we've covered the font, the font weight and the font size. Underneath the font size, we have the leading and that is the space between two lines. So if we go and increase the size of our text box a lot more, and I'm going to type a second line. Awesome text because this text is just awesome. So with all of this selected, by default, it's on auto. So it will automatically set the spacing between those two lines. We can select 30, which brings them so close together that they start overlapping. Or we can specify something like 100. And you can see that we can increase this using the up and down arrows as well. Now some other options that we've got, I'll just set that back to auto. Here we have all caps, so we can click this and it will automatically capitalize all of the letters selected. And we can click it again to return to how we had it previously. Along from that, we've got superscript. So if I add a number at the end and just select that number and select superscript, you can see here it will place it in a smaller size and above any of the other text. We can select this number and we can also have subscript, which does exactly the same, but it goes below the baseline. And again, we can click that to just put it back to normal. We can also select our text and we can add an underline or we can add a strike through and we can add a strike through. So you can have an underline and a strike through if you really want. So these can easily be switched on and off just by clicking. So along from this, we have kerning. This is the space in between individual letters. So with my cursor currently between the E and the S, we can select from this drop down. And let's select 100 and you can see that it increases the space just between those two letters. So let's undo that. We can now select all of the text and underneath we've got tracking. This is also known as character spacing. And if we select a value from that, what it will do is it will space all of the letters apart equally. So rather than focusing on just two letters, it will apply this to all of the letters we've selected. And we can even go as extreme as something like 
500. So the letters become very far apart. Let's put that back to zero. We've also got vertical scaling, so we can add a scaling by percentage to our text if we like. So this will typically skew it or distort the text slightly. And we can also do the same for horizontal. So that's just along here. So we can adjust the scaling. So as we change the font size itself, that is slightly different to scaling. So let's set that back to 100% just for now, just so we're not working with text that's skewed. Something else we can do is select all our text or individual characters and we can adjust the baseline shift and we can enter a value here or we can use the arrows up and down just to move text or individual letters above the baseline or below it. Let's just undo that and put that back to zero. And we can also select our text and we've got an option here called skew also known as false italic. So some fonts come with italics and it's always best to select them from here. However, not all fonts have that. So you can kind of cheat this italic effect using skew and it will skew it by an angle. So somewhere around 11 is usually a nice amount to kind of cheat an italic if your font you're using doesn't have one. But you can skew it, of course, to the absolute extreme if you really want. To the point where it comes completely illegible. So let's just undo that. So there we go, those are a few different ways in which we can work with text in Adobe InDesign. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.